All right guys, so we're to the point where we need to think about mounting the motor. And um, as I said in the last video, I think the best way for me to mount the motor is on the outside like this. Reason being that um, with the length of the belt, uh, the clearance uh, between the motor and the cutter head is going to be pretty tight. I think it'll be difficult to get it in there without having a problem and don't really want to figure out how to buy a new belt. So I'm just going to mount it on the outside, build some kind of mechanism to allow me to tension it. The problem with this is that the motor is going in the wrong direction now. So um, we need to reverse the motor. Now this is a universal motor which most small power tools are. So um, if you look at it, it has brushes, just like a DC motor. And um, just like a DC motor, you can swap the wires to the brushes and it'll change directions. As long as you leave the main wires that go to the outside coils uh, the same. <laughs> Okay, now that we got that soldered up, we need to cut this cover to size. Uh, this is the cover that was originally over the back of the, on the side of the, the hand planer. And it has two molded pieces right here that actually held the brushes in place. So use that screw right there to hold this in place, but we need to cut the end off of this so it won't stick out. And then we'll be ready to try it. One important thing to pay attention to when reversing a motor like this is how the pulley is connected to the shaft. In this case, the pulley is threaded onto the shaft, so now that we've changed the direction, the pulley is going to want to come off the shaft when it's under load. So I had to put a keyway onto the motor. Now we need to show that swapping the brushes changed the direction of the motor. So if you look on the cutter head, it needs to travel clockwise in order to cut. The blade is right here. Um, you can see where the cutout is on the case right here. It used to be connected like that. So therefore, in order for this motor to turn this cutter head clockwise, the motor must have turned clockwise. So therefore, we need it now to turn counterclockwise so that we can rotate the cutter head clockwise with the motor backwards. So let me wire some stuff up and we'll see if it rotates counterclockwise. So I've got the motor mounted to my bench. I've got a plug taped onto it just to demonstrate that it is traveling, that it is rotating counterclockwise. So I'm going to try to bump it really quick so it won't get up too high of speed. Well, that's pretty tough, but you can see right before it stops, it's rotating counterclockwise. <laughs> 